Well, a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you very much for taking time off from your busy schedule to uh, come and have a look and understand what the economics of development major at ISS is all about. Um, with here with me today, we have uh, Matthias Riga, who is the course leader of the economics of development uh, major at ISS. And also we have three students who will introduce themselves later on. So without further ado, I would like to invite Matthias uh, to provide the presentation for the economics of development major. Welcome to this webinar on the major economics of development. I'm Matthias Rieger. I'm a development economist myself, associate professor at the ISS for a few years, and I'm also leading the major in the economics of development. Um, most of my work is on health economics uh, and behavioral economics in the global south. And that's also uh, what I teach at ISS. For instance, I teach a class on behavioral economics at ISS. And um, as you know, the, um, the ISS program is one of the leading development studies program in the world. So you can see here, here on, the, in, on the slides. But I would say also what makes this program really special and why we're so highly ranked are the students. And so I'm very happy to um, have three of our excellent students here today, wonderful students. Um, and uh, they will now briefly introduce themselves as well. Um, the three of you, you want to say something about yourselves? Yeah, okay, please. I'm Amanda from Brazil. Uh, my background is now in economics. I'm graduating in international relations and I have a specialization in post-diplomatic studies. My professional, professional background is mainly in a public bank in Brazil. Uh, I have been working there for a long time, but I also have uh, an experience in an international trade company and with NGOs, uh, working with refugees and migrants. Yeah, and as I don't have a background in economics, it was difficult in the beginning. So just to a recommendation for everyone who want to take the major, uh, trying to take a look in, in econometric issues, these things that we have, I think half of the class that don't, yeah. don't have a background in economics, but yeah. is, is also possible. But yeah, we will discover, well, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, discover yeah. the fun of this major later yeah. in the presentation, <laughs> I think, Matthias. Yeah, I also <laughs> didn't have uh, the background in economics, but my background was more relevant. I did it in uh, business, international mm -hmm. business. So my name is Joe. I come from Vietnam and I did my undergrad here in the Netherlands uh, in international business. And uh, now I'm working part time at a medical social enterprise for stock and demand planning. And through it, I know that I really want to do something with microeconomics. Uh, mm -hmm. So specifically with healthcare supply and demand in uh, developing countries. Oh, my name is Joel. I'm from Tanzania. I did my majors in economics and statistics. So I had a background in economics and statistics. Uh, uh, I really consider myself as an, uh, having interest in the macroeconomics, though uh, over time here, I've developed in some interest in some micro issues, uh, such as health and the environment. Uh, for those people who like to be good policy analyst, even if you have the economic background, since most of us who did economics background have the theoretical part of it, now this is the right place for you to come and integrate the theory, the theory part of it with other parts of the social sciences, how you can link economics with other studies. Thank you so much, uh, Jewel, Amanda and Shaw. As you can see, we have uh, diverse backgrounds entering into our major. And I wanted to give you a quick overview of the major and we can also then answer uh, some questions um, during the presentation or after the presentation and also interact more with the students so you can learn from them and from their experiences um, as we go. So this is the major ECD uh, for short. And um, what we do, we want to provide you with some in-depth theoretical knowledge uh, and also provide you with some analytical tools to look at the key issues that many countries in the global north, but also in the global south are facing today. Um, many of the problems that they are facing today, these countries, um, are, fa are common problems. Uh, just think of climate change and, and, and the like. Um, and we always look at these problems from an economic point of view. Um, now, some of the topics we look at are more at a macroeconomic level, um, comparing countries and seeing how different countries deal with different issues. 
But we also look at more at the regional and also at the individual or household level uh, within our major. Now, um, the target group of this major is very diverse and we have very diverse backgrounds going into the major. And then also this major opens up many career, career trajectories for you, I would say. So we have examples of students going into the academic world afterwards doing PhDs at good institutions in Europe and elsewhere. Some uh, return or go into government, others uh, work in banking, international development, and also NGOs. And we also have a good uh, a proportion of students uh, going into the private sector, for instance, also in the Netherlands. Uh, um, now, as I said, we have some kind of main themes that we tend to look at, and um, three students here already hinted at some of the things that they're interested in. Uh, broadly speaking, um, there's uh, macroeconomics and microeconomics, so macroeconomics looking at countries, um, microeconomics looking at individuals or households. We also look at the environment that uh, individuals or countries are embedded in, in the global economic environment and the institutions and regulatory frameworks, both at the domestic level and the global level that govern these uh, environments. And we also look at different socioeconomic groups because even within a country or within a region, there are huge inequalities um, that you want to uh, study uh, using econom economic methods and approaches. So that's kind of the, the, rough, the, the rough themes that we look in. Then more specifically, um, some people such as myself, we are more, more um, specialized on, for instance, health issues or um, social protection issues. Others in our group focus on issues such as climate change or conflict um, and, and the like. Um, so what will you learn? Just a quick overview. What are you going to get out of this if you join our major, which I hope uh, you will do? Well, you will gain some insights into what are the current economic debates and how can you participate in these. Um, to that end, you will learn some economic theories to, um, to and how, you, how to apply them to common problems at the moment. Um, a key feature of our major in economics of development compared to other institutions is that we, we do teach other you know, alternative schools of economic thought. So you will not only get exposed to let's say mainstream economic theories, but also other theories such as hetero, heterodox economics and the like. And you're also embedded as economists within a larger program in development studies. And that means that you will be also exposed to other disciplines and ways of thinking. Um, in our major specifically, we put a lot of emphasis on, emphasis on data work uh, and learning to interpret data, working with data. And we do recognize that you come from different backgrounds. And so we try to kind of make it intuitively possible for everyone to do so, even if they haven't had extensive training in, 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 in data work and the like. And we also wanted to teach you some, want to teach you some methods on how to analyze that data. And um, both when it comes to quantitative and qualitative data. Now, overall, one thing that's really um, that's really close to our hearts at ISS, but also within our majors, to make you turn you into critical thinkers. And I know all of you joining are already critical thinkers, but that's something we really want to sharpen, and also that, that we use to learn from you, because we don't only teach; we also want to learn um, from you and your critical thinking and you challenging us in, in class and adding to the, the, the debate. Um, before I continue introducing some of the lecturers, I wanted to ask the students, um, what are your current interests uh, um, in the themes uh, in the major? Are you more interested in macroeconomic issues, microeconomic issues, or you still don't know or something in between? Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? What are your issues and uh, interests that, uh, issues that you're interested in? Um, yeah, I think as I said before, I think my interest is more in microeconomics and I think the majority of us is in microeconomics yeah. because microeconomics is very challenging, but uh, definitely there are some students who are very passionate about microeconomics. I think uh, Amanda is really uh, challenging herself with time series data next term, Yeah. so uh, maybe she is more interested in microeconomics and she can have some say about it. Yeah. Yeah, in my case, I'm more interested in, in, in macroeconomics. I think that uh, it helps me a lot to understand the issues in my in my country. So it's very useful for me. I'm really enjoying to, to learn these things about macroeconomics. And, and which uh, topics at the moment specifically with macroeconomics interest you? 
So about the, uh, in my case, because I'm working in a public bank, so I'm interested in, in understanding the, the whole of the public banking in the development. That is also the topic that I'm planning to, to work in the RP. Yeah, and all the issues relate to the, you know, to the framework in the country, to the inequality, all these things is uh, very interesting for me. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I ju uh, just wanted to add, RP means research paper, and oh, that's yeah. your thesis, basically, yeah, just yeah. for everyone to know. Yeah. Yes, yes, also I would like to say that uh, I'm interested in macroeconomics because for the, for the past three years, I've been working as an economist uh, in the fiscal and debt management space. So, uh, and according to what is going on right now around the world with increase in the fiscal deficit and uh, debt accumulation in most of the developing countries, uh, I think I'm um, in the very inter interesting, I mean, field or sector or uh, what, what my interest is. And also, uh, uh, I wanted. Uh, I'm planning on doing the research. I mean, the, to write a research paper on the fiscal, but trying to relate it with the democratic election. Trying to see how the government uses the fiscal deficit, fiscal policies in influ influencing the democratic election results. Excellent, fascinating topics and interests, and really, I think uh, you found a good home in the major for these kinds of topics. Um, talking about what's your home when you when you do join the major, well, we we are a group of development economists uh, with very diverse uh, backgrounds. Um, we have uh, lecturers from all over the world. I myself, I'm I'm from Germany. Uh, we have lecturers um, from Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Bangladesh, India, Ecuador, the Netherlands, Greece, Italy. You know, everyone's from a different country. And we also work on very different issues, but all of these issues are connected, which kind of binds us together strongly. So we have, um, for instance, Eliseos Papirakis and Lorenzo Pellegrini, they work on environmental economics and issues. Um, we have um, another colleague, John Crusati, he works on political economy, especially political economy of aid. Um, Sam Sam from Ethiopia, she's working on global health. Arjun Bedi is a labor economist, uh, also works on education a lot. Mansub Murshid from Bangladesh, he is um, working on conflict uh, and development. Uh, Peter van Berghek is a trade economist from the Netherlands. And Robert Sparrow is also Dutch, uh, working on labor issues, um, labor markets, demography. And while Binyam uh, Demena is from Eritrea and he works on firms and, and trade and international investment. So I think we have a, a, quite a good array of uh, lecturers that uh, teach very different topics and everyone finds somebody eventually to work with also for the thesis. Um, I, I, I'm sure you're gonna have more questions. So if you do have more questions on the structure, more detailed questions, either you can ask them later in the chat, but you can also always contact us by email, either Darren or, or me directly. It's a roughly a 16 month uh, journey. So um, compared to some other programs that you have, for instance, in the UK, you have a bit more time, especially when it comes to the thesis to develop your research. And so it's a, it's a 60 month program and it starts in September as, as some of you might have already read and it's composed of different credits, 88 credits in total. And that amounts to some study hours and um, lecture hours. Now, when you look at kind of how is this program structured, it starts off in September with some courses to prepare you for the pro program, some remedials, for instance, uh, when it comes to economics and, and, and math um, or statistic, statistics. Um, and then you enter into the program, you take some foundation courses. And these foundation courses are meant to give you some training and disciplines that are important at the Institute, for instance, in political science or sociology or economics. And you have to take, um, because it's an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary program, also foundation courses in different disciplines. Okay, it's three in total actually. And at the same time, you're also taking a, a general course, which is called the Making of Development, Histories, Theories and Practices. And that's a course that all majors take together. And it's kind of the backbone of the program where it's an introduction to development studies. And uh, you'll be exposed to anthropologists uh, teaching or economists such as myself and so forth. 
Um, and you also have a chance to interact with students from other majors. Then as the, you know, the program progresses, you will specialize more. You will take some courses specifically for economics uh, majors. And later on in term two and three, you can specialize also further and you can take some coursework to do so, um, some, some optional coursework to do so. Um, and then finally, in term three and four, a lot of your time will be spent actually working a thesis and, um, uh, and working towards the graduation. Now, before I uh, continue, I wanted to ask the students, um, uh, what kind of foundation courses did you take uh, in term 1A, for instance? Do you, can you just say something about that? Yeah, so for ECD major, it's recommended that you take a uh, regression. Uh, yeah, regression is an intermediate course for economics, but we often joke that it's not very uh, it's intermediate. Not intermediate. <laughs> yeah, it's not very intermediate, uh, but it's very, very highly recommended for ECD years. It's very useful, yeah. Uh, also, I take intermediate mm -hmm. politics and intermediate uh, sociology. So you have two, uh, three groups, sociology, politics and economics. And uh, you have intermediate and uh, advanced choices. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, I took the intermediate in sociology and also regression and the advanced in politics and was a good choice, I think. I think most of the students pick up one in advanced and two in intermediate or maybe two advanced. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, they are very very useful and, we, we and can... uh, what uh, optional courses are you taking um, now in the coming terms uh, so mm -hmm. for term two so for term 1b we all study together there's a compulsory course uh, but for term two and term three we all have optional courses mm -hmm. so uh, for this term i have three courses i have uh, topics of regression also very recommended for ecd years mm -hmm. uh, and i have promotions of local development and another optional but uh, optional course but major course for ECD is called international trade and investment. Uh, Joel is also in the same uh, course with me in yes. international trade and investment policies but uh, Amanda because of her macroeconomics passion <laughs> she uh, she's choosing uh, growth poverty and inequality. And yeah. also I, 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 I took also. both of them <laughs> yeah. the growth inequality and poverty with the international trade and just to add on the foundation um, courses, programs were very useful as I'm looking forward to be a policy analyst. So uh, you need to interact well with other players in the field, like most of the uh, most of the analysts or um, most of the policies are sent to the politicians. So you know how to, to deal with them. At least it gives you the ideas on their perceptions on how they operate and also sociology just to be able to cope with the community at large. So they are somehow stressful, but they are good and very useful. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I have a question, Matthias. Yeah. Um, maybe you can, or the students perhaps, I don't know, uh, can explain a little bit about the difference between intermediate and advanced level of the foundation course and how it will affect uh, yeah. Does it have an effect that whether you can proceed to term one B if uh, yeah if you choose intermediate or advanced? Maybe a little bit explanation. I yeah, think... typically yeah, typically you would take an intermediate course um, if you haven't been exposed much to that discipline. So, for instance, you shouldn't take an advanced sociology course if you haven't um, um, if you haven't taken any sociology before. Then you would take a, a more intermediate course. Um, and so there's a lot of choice for these foundation courses and everyone finds the right mix, um, I, I, I would say. Um, but of course, you need to complete your credits to, to come to the end um, of the program. Now, that's to say, you know, I also do the admissions for ECD or um, with, together with a co colleague as well. And uh, we only admit you, it, admit you if we think you're a strong student and you will be able to go through the program. So if we do admit you for the ECD major, we really think that you can do it and you will be a good student. Um, just uh, here on this slide, you can actually see some of the foundation courses and then it becomes maybe a bit clearer. There are two courses that you can take within sociology, um, two within political science, and three within economics and statistics. And so these have different levels of difficulty. I wouldn't say difficulty, but different levels of pre-required -required, um, um, backgrounds, okay? So some are intermediate, some are more advanced, advanced essentially. Um, 
Now, when it comes to the general course, as I said, that's a course that all take together and that's compulsory for all. And that uh, exposes to you to a variety of uh, schools of thought and approaches and topics. And it's really a nice course at ISS because if you were to go in a completely monodisciplinary program, so, you know, pure economics of development master, you wouldn't be typically exposed to that. And I think that that enriches your also intellectual development a lot. Um, um, one thing that's especially important in ECD are the research techniques courses. So um, Chao and Amanda, and, um, they already hinted at that you have, you know, you might have to take some regression courses when you're in ECD um, because we want you to be able to analyze data. That said, um, we do recognize that different students have different needs. So some students want to take the bare minimum of, let's say, quantitative courses. And other students, they want to have as much as possible. And that's up to you. So you can find your, your path through the program and see, OK, how much quantitative techniques do I really need? Or do I want to do more qualitative? Um, do I want to take more qualitative courses? That's fine as well. Uh, and again, if we do admit to you, we think that you, you, you are able to, to handle uh, the, the program and also the techniques courses. Um, just uh, before we ask the students some things again, um, just wanted to give you an overlook on the things that are specific to the major. Um, so most of your uh, workload is actually in, in the ECD major. And so that includes, for instance, major courses that are targeted and tailored um, for ECD students. Uh, in term one, for instance, you have principles of economic development. And in term two, you have the choice between growth, inequality, and poverty, and a course on trade and investment policies. And these are kind of uh, courses that all students have to take. And um, in addition, um, all ECD students write a, write a thesis that's related to, you know, to the major. So that means that um, typically either the methods that you use or the theories that you use would be used by economists or it would be a topic that economists care about a lot. I do have to say we're very flexible because everything is economics, I would say. We're very flexible about the choice of topics. And you'll see if you go and look at the topics that students have worked on in the past, it's very diverse. Um, and and uh, we're very flexible, as I said, in, in, this, in this regard. Because what we really want you to do is to, you know, gain some um, ability to do some independent research in a thesis. Um, the thesis is about 15,000 words. And what we want you to be able to do is have some methodological rigor, be original in your thinking, critically reflect on what you're finding and how you're analyzing data, for instance, and then also make a small contribution to the literature. And here at the bottom of the slides, you can see some topics that people have worked on. For instance, some have worked on uh, teacher discrimination and grading. Um, others have worked on tax, uh, payroll taxes in Brazil. There's, uh, there was a topic uh, related to the oil industry in Ecuador. Um, a student from Vietnam worked on financial stability or instability. Um, and some students have worked on trade. So very diverse uh, topics. And um, um, now I actually wanted to know um, the three of you, my students, did you think a little bit about your RP topic already, or are you still at the early stages and uh, and wondering what to work on? Uh, I think yeah. we're at different phases of uh, de developing our research paper. So some of us came uh, with the research paper in my in the initially, but uh, some develop it throughout the program. I think for me it was developed a bit later in the program, but now I think I want to do something with the, the healthcare or public health system in Vietnam. So it's going to be about, uh, yeah, so I think I developed this during term 1B because there was a very interesting paper about uh, slave, uh, slavery trade and its impacts on their trust in the health system. So I want to see how corruption probably will have some impacts on their trust in the public health care system. Ah, fascinating. Yeah. It's a great topic. Yeah. In my case, because I have a scholarship for my company, so I need to follow the, the topic that is related to this. So uh, I already said that it's about the, the role of public bank. That is the topic that I'm interested in, like public bank and inequality, uh, these things. But it still is a very broad topic, so I, I know that I can explore a lot of 
things inside of this. Yeah, and I like I already wrote some research questions, but I I think they will change a lot of times yet. Yeah, that's quite normal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the way it works, you come up with some first ideas, maybe also talking to colleagues or to um, lecturers. Mm -hmm. And then together with your supervisors, you will actually develop mm -hmm. this thesis, uh, especially mm -hmm. at the beginning, you will get a lot of feedback and inputs. Mm -hmm. And we yeah. really spend a lot of time with students to, to get you to good um, uh, thesis. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of our students also, you know, collect their own data and really mm -hmm. um, contribute original data to um, to the field that they're working in. But also some students work with existing data. That's also, of course, um, mm -hmm. possible. And, and by the way, we have had some very good research papers in the past that, uh, that afterwards have been published by very good journals in the field and um, that made us very proud. Um, no, do, Noel, do you have, uh, what are you working on? Um, what, what are you thinking to work on? Yes, uh, I always wanted to do something on, uh, uh, on fiscal space, but it was so general when I was coming here. But later on, uh, I can say uh, I developed to uh, trying to assess the impact of the fiscal deficit to democratic elections. So at first it was just about fiscal policies, uh, fiscal deficit, but with time, I think uh, I have had interest in trying to relate it to democratic elections and governance in general. Yeah, so you see, I mean, that's, uh, that's a nice topic, especially at ISS, where you combine, let's say, a more economic topic such as fiscal uh, policy uh, with, you know, another field such as political science, and so that's an ideal topic for ISS. But um, let me tell you that it's really, you don't have to worry that you have to come to ISS with a topic in hands and all of that. You have enough time really to explore here uh, and be inspired and be open-minded. Um, and um, and everyone comes to a nice topic at the end and a nice thesis. Um, I think I've already talked a lot and uh, you can f find more information on the internet. Um, there's the study guide and the academic calendar where you also find all the courses that are available to you within the major and outside of the major and with some course descriptions. You can also always contact um, um, me or Darren if you have more questions. And you can even also contact some of the lecturers um, if, if you want. If you're interested in a, spe a specific course, feel free to reach out to them. They're generally um, happy to answer. Uh, as I already mentioned earlier, if you have any question, please contact me at study at ISS.nl. For now, thank you so much, Amanda, Chao, Joel, and Matthias, uh, for having uh, the ECD presentation. The students, uh, good luck to your exams. I know you're having your exams now. Soon you'll be in term three. Uh, time flies. So um, good luck, and uh, thank you very much uh, for participating, and thank you everyone for joining for this presentation. Have a nice day. Thank you for having us. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye.